lot of people are interested in using herbs as medicine, but they're also a little nervous about starting to use them. There's a lot of overwhelming information, and people are really nervous about making somebody sicker rather than better, making sure they're using herbs the proper way. Today we're going to be talking about some really easy places to start with herbal medicine. And I've got Doc Jones, a homegrown herbalist here with me today, and we're going to be talking about some of his favorite easy to use herbs. But I want to stay right at the beginning. You don't have to start using herbs as medicine to treat massive problems, do you? They don't have to be like you know, emergency situations or long-standing, uh, you know, issues that you guys have had in your family, they can be really simple everyday solutions for things that you have going on. Yep. So what do you think? Well, I think, I think so. And I think probably 95% of the things that we seek out medical care for, we could solve very easily with herbal medicine, really. And that's because 95% of the things that are going on aren't super life-threatening serious things yeah. and the plants really are remarkable even for some of the life-threatening things they're remarkable but for everyday you know family issues there's nothing better than having an herb garden you know and this little garden of yours is just a medical paradise you, you have all kinds of wonderful things here wonderful tools for all kinds of stuff and you know you mentioned herb safety and I think that the herbs that are in common use today almost without exception, have really wide margins of safety. It's very, very difficult to hurt yourself with an herb. You know, there's a lot of, you know, little talking points that come out that say, this herb's bad because of this, or bad because of that, or bad because of that. And I'll tell you, if you want to do something really scary, you know, turn all the lights out in your house some dark, stormy night and read your ibuprofen label with a flashlight. You know, that's scary. <laughs> so, you know, nothing's safe. <laughs> but nobody worries about taking ibuprofen. Right. You know, because no. cause for the vast majority of people, so what? You know, yeah. it fixes my headache and I didn't die. That's right. good. You know, yeah. and it's the same thing with herbs, although more so. Yeah. Because our bodies really are adapted to using plant material and they know what to do with that stuff. Yeah. The first thing is I would say is the margins of safety are really, really big for most of them. And you don't have to worry too much about that. You do have to be very careful with pregnancy because some herbs are a bad idea during pregnancy. Some herbs are a bad idea during lactation. And some herbs can interact with pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. And that's the only reason really that the medical profession is so adamantly against herbal medicine other than the economics of it is that they don't know anything about it and they know it can interfere and do different things and they want to know what's going on. Yeah. You know, I'm given this because I know what this does and if we th do something else, I won't know what's going on. Right. And I, and I get that and I don't have, you know, I respect that. You know, if I was taking care of a patient and somebody wanted to do something and I didn't know what it was going to do to him, I'd be against that too. Right. But the fact is that some herbs markedly enhance pharmaceuticals, some of them markedly interfere with pharmaceuticals. Right. So that, there's that issue too. Yeah. But other than that, the question of safety isn't a big question in my mind or a big concern. And you're absolutely right that, that you really can start just with a few simple little things. And that's a beautiful way to start. Mm. You know, it's kind of baby steps to herbal medicine. Yeah. You know, and, and my advice to folk, I, I have a book called The Homegrown Herbalist. And in the first part of that book, that's what we talk about is how do you even get going on this? And honestly, you know, I'm a veterinarian and I'm a naturopath and I treat everything, everything from a runny nose to a gunshot wound and everything yeah. in between. And I can do everything I'm doing probably with 30 or 40 herbs. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, and I mean, I have 120 of them on my shelf because yeah. I'm sentimental, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and there's little nuances of fun things you can do, but I could do everything I'm doing with, with 30 plants probably. Wow. And I could do everything I need to do for my wife and kids with probably 10. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we don't have to learn 100 different plants. Yeah. And, and my advice would be, if somebody wants to get started, is get started. Pick one plant and, and learn about it and read about it and plant some in your garden <coughs> and use it. We walked through here, there's some fabulous examples of perfectly harmless, extraordinarily 
beneficial plants that could be used by everybody. The catnip is sitting right here in front of us. Mm -hmm. You know, catnip and any of the mints, that would be a great group of plants in general. To start with. To yeah. start with. Catnip is really wonderful for anything wrong with your digestive system, you know, colicky babies, colicky husbands, you know, <laughs> indigestion, belly aches. And it's also very nice for sort of a bedtime tea mm -hmm. to unwind you a little bit for bedtime. Yeah. So super easy. There's nothing complicated about harvesting it. Cut the top quarter or third of the plant off and you can use it fresh or use it dry and it doesn't matter. Make yeah. a tea. You know, the other thing that people worry about with herbal medicine is all the different kinds of delivery systems we have, you know, teas and tinctures and glycerites and right. poultices and Which fomentations. <laughs> how do I do it? What do I do? Yeah. And like I said, it, it doesn't matter at all how you do it or what you do. Yeah. The plant's the medicine. You could take that catnip and chew on it and it would fix your belly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or you could dry the powder and make a tea. Okay. Or you can dry the powder and, or take the fresh plant and throw it in your morning smoothie. It just doesn't matter. Okay. The so dosing. The point is just to get it into Just you. take it. Yeah. And the dosing for almost every herb for a dry herb, it's about a teaspoon of the dry powder. And if you're using fresh stuff, use twice as much. Okay. As a general rule. Yeah. You know, so it's not complicated. Catnip's great. Calendula right next to it. You've got that adorable little flower. Mm -hmm. That's a, a great uh, antibiotic. It's got some antiviral properties. It's particularly good against herpes viruses. Okay. And so you can use it for cold sores and shingles, you know, topically or internally. And it doesn't matter how you use it topically. You can grind up the fresh plant and put it on. Oh, wow. Or you can take the dry powder and add some water and make a poultice. Or you can make a tincture and spray it on. Okay. It doesn't matter. You know, uh -huh. put it in your bathtub. You know, if, if it's in contact with your skin, it'll do its job. So, you know, there's two just right here. Right. Another one that would be really great for people that I wish everybody was doing more of is burdock root. Oh, yeah. You know, burdock root grows absolutely everywhere. Burdock has a lot of really great properties. It's, it's a tremendous nutritive. It's especially beneficial bacteria in your gut. Mm. But it's also a, a liver and kidney tonic, so it helps clean you out and, you know, helps digestion because of the liver and the bile production. It's just a fantastic plant. And a, a spoonful of burdock powder in your morning smoothie every day is a great idea. Oh, yeah. You know, and it's perfectly safe. Yeah. If you have chamomile and you have, you know, a bellyache, chamomile will fix that too. Yeah. You know, if you're having trouble getting to sleep, chamomile will fix that too. Yeah. It's just so simple and so easy, and all you have to do is learn a couple of plants. Yeah. I would say that, you know, for an average family, if you knew five or 10 herbs really well, you'd be in great shape. Yeah. You know, there'd be all kinds of things you could do. Yeah. It's, it really is a simple process. Yeah, there's no reason to be scared of it and there's no reason to be overwhelmed by it. Just, just do it one by one. Let me clarify five or 10 of any herb, right? Like you're not saying here's a list of five or 10 that you have to know and then exactly. you'll try it. It's, it's, that herbs cover so many different things. And I think the hardest thing about herbalism is actually believing how simple it really is. Right. If you can get over that, then you can effectively use herbs. Yep, I agree, I agree. And I think I think we overcomplicate yeah. and overthink and overwork it. And, you know, God made these astonishingly effective delivery systems to get medicine into our body and food yeah. into our body and just use it, okay. just use it. <laughs> Get it into your body. You guys, thank you for hanging out with us today. If you are interested in more on herbs, check out this video right here.